The scripture says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I used to be addicted to pornography. It had a grip upon my life and knowing the truth, knowing Jesus can bring liberty into your life. I've experienced that. You know, the statistic says that 12% of all websites are pornographic websites. One out of third porn viewers are women. And 70% of 18 year olds from 18 to 24 year olds visit pornographic sites in a typical month. 25% of all search engine requests are porn related and 35% of all downloads are pornographic. An average child uh, first time sees pornography is at the age of 11. That's, that's when I was exposed to pornography even though there was no social media and we had no access to internet. The least popular day that pornography is viewed is Thanksgiving and the most popular day where pornog when pornography is viewed is Sunday. You would think Sunday would be a place where people serve God but unfortunately it's a time where a lot of people also um, are relaxed, chillaxing and browsing through and they trip and fall into pornography. So here are seven facts or seven truths about pornography and I believe that as you know the truth that the truth will set you free. The first and foremost is pornography, viewing it, consuming it, Bible calls it sin. Now there's no direct commandment or direct instruction that viewing pornography is a sin but we know that lust is a sin. In Matthew 5 38 Jesus says that if whoever looks at a woman to lust with her has committed adultery in her heart. So lust and adultery, fornication is not just a physical act, it's also it happens and begins in the heart. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 it says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not even be named among you as it's fitting for the saints. God wants us to live a holy and a pure life. God wants us to live that life not only physically, God wants us to live that life not only in our finances but also in our relationships as well as in our thoughts and in our feelings. And when you're watching pornography, when you're consuming pornography, you're committing that sin in your mind. You're committing that sin in your heart and that is not pleasing to God because you're literally, that begins already like like sexual act but it begins there in the head already because all of the other sins, every sin takes its root in the heart. The second truth about pornography is pornography is addicting. Porn is like cocaine and heroin addiction. You know there's 1.9 million cocaine users and 2 million heroin users in the United States compared to 40 million regular users of online pornography. Both drugs trigger chemical tolerance which requires higher quantities of the drug to be used to achieve the same intensity of the effect that a person achieved in the beginning and that's exactly how pornography works. It has, it's like this athlete's foot, you know, it itches and if you scratch it, it promises that it will stop itching and then if you keep scratching it, it keeps on itching. It gets intensified because God did not call lust. God does not tell us that lust can be satisfied. It needs to be crucified. The worst part about pornography is that it starts first as a one look, a person looked at it and then it becomes a habit and then it becomes an addiction and then it becomes something that hooks you on and you feel guilty about it, you feel bad about it, it consumes your time, it consumes your finances, it stains your consciousness and the worst part about it is that the pornography that used to satisfy you can no longer satisfy you and the person begins to look at harder pornography, person begins to look at all kinds of other uh, violent pornography, same-sex pornography, lesbianism and other stuff, lesbian pornography, homosexual pornography so that to get the same kind of a high because it's no longer just them now that gets the pleasure of that. It's no longer just the flesh. A lot of times it's a demon that already lives there that craves those images, that craves that forbidden fruit and it desires that and that desire gets stronger as you view it more and more and you're no longer feeding the flesh, you are feeding a demon that longs for the forbidden fruit. Truth number three, pornography, porn is fake. Now I know it's not necessarily something that you never knew about but a lot of times what begins to happen is that people think especially those who get married and they begin to imagine that that's how marriage sex is going to be like. This is how you know intimacy is going to be like in marriage. And the problem is that the people in pornography are actors, they're not spouses. And that 45 minute video, it takes three days to make it. There's 
gazillion takes if you watch the testimonies of people who came out of pornography industry and they'll tell you that stuff is fake. A lot of them even feel dirty and ashamed afterwards. All of that is it's, it's actors that are playing. They're called adult entertainers that are playing that act. It's not real. None of that stuff happens like that in real life. And when you go into marriage with these kind of expectations, with this kind of fascination and with this fantasy, you will destroy your marriage because it's not real. It only exists like that in the movies. The same way as, you know, when you watch movies and you see people in the movies that are flying or people in the movies like Iron Man or, you know, Spider-Man or, or all other men. You know, that stuff is not real. All of that, it's an act. All of that is, there's effects that are involved in it. And when you go, try to do that in the real life, you will be extremely disappointed and you will hurt yourself. And that's exactly what begins to happen when people bring pornography. Eventually, sooner or later, every person that watches pornography and doesn't get free from it, they begin to imagine and desire to see these kind of experiences in their bedroom and they will become not only disappointed, they will destroy their marriage because they're trying to bring something into marriage that's just not real. It's completely fake. Number four, pornography degrades women. Pornography sees women as objects. Pornography sees women as something that you use, not someone that you love. Pornography views women as, as, as toys, as, as something that's not human, something that's not made in the image and likeness of God. And so we have to, in order to honor the humanity, in order to honor the image of God in every person, you have to walk away from watching pornography and walking away from it because not only you are satisfying your flesh and you are feeding the demons, but you're also degrading. You're also uh, destroying God's image in somebody else by letting it be used like that. Number five, pornography twist, twists the view, distorts the view concerning sex. You know, sex is not supposed to be what pornography presents it to be. A lot of times what, what pornography presents sex as, as it's just, it's something that's physical. It's something that is just on the level of the bodies. It presents as something that, you know, it has these amazing looking bodies and, and they're just completely ready and the woman is just wants to do all of these acts and the man can do all of these acts. But in reality, when you get married, you realize that sex does not start when you want to have sex. Intimacy begins in the kitchen, not in the bedroom. When you get married, you will realize that you can't just have sex. This is not a, an act. This is an overflow of closeness emotionally, closeness mentally, closeness spiritually. This is an overflow. This is not just a pill that fixes everything and it's more than physical. It's emotional, it's spiritual and it's mental. And, and, and it's mental. Number six is viewing pornography leads to shame. When I remember when I used to be addicted, I was exposed at a very tender young age in the country I lived in, in Ukraine. Um, and then I brought those images to my house. We didn't have a television. We didn't even, I don't think we even had a radio um, because we lived at, at those times, I think like 97 or 98, um, uh, even before the year 2000. And then we moved to the United States a few years later and I got really hooked on pornography and mind you we didn't have a, a speed high speed internet it was like this AOL internet that you had to you know wait for everybody to stop talking on the on the house phone for you to um, use it and I still was able to find it and one of the things that it produced every single time and it wasn't because I was taught that pornography is wrong it was because it, it felt dirty I felt guilty I felt ashamed I felt like somebody just threw me in the pile of poop. It's interesting that in that moment that I viewed pornography, you know, it it's gratified my flesh. It satisfied something that within me that wanted that at that moment. And the moment I ended it, you know, it was something that made me feel disgusted, made me feel guilty. And I was already beginning to minister. I was 13 years of age. I was 14 years of age. I was beginning to already kind of draw closer to God. It was very difficult. It made it my, my walk with the Lord very difficult at the time. It brought a lot of shame and it brought a lot of guilt. At first, I thought it was just the issue of the flesh, you know. Um, 
I just need to discipline myself more and I've tried everything that I could to discipline myself more and it actually intensified. And that's when through reading some books and hearing some other people's messages and experiences, I came to realization at a very young tender age that I was dealing with a spiritual entity that had this intense appetite that lived inside of me that wanted to have that and it would take over me at the moment of my weakness or once a month, no matter how hard I tried, it would take over me and I needed deliverance. And I'm going to deal with that in another video. But the truth number six is that it leads to shame. It leads to guilt. It leads to condemnation. And God doesn't want us to live in shame. God wants us to live in faith and He wants us to live in glory. And truth number seven is that it will create dissatisfaction with marriage sex and many times it leads to divorce. I cannot tell you how many couples that I've prayed for and how many people that I've talked with where the marriage is hanging on a thread and a lot of times it will lead to adultery because a person is no longer satisfied with their marriage. They're chasing this fantasy or a lot of times that person either husband or a wife gets so isolated from the physical intimacy, from the emotional intimacy with their spouse and they live in this virtual bubble where they constantly satisfy themselves by watching these images and these images get, you know, and they go deeper and deeper into harder and harder pornography and then they, you know, start soliciting prostitutes, they start soliciting escorts, going to, you know, all kinds of strip bars and, and the rest of the stuff and not only they destroy their Christian testimony, not only they walk away from the Lord but many times they destroy their marriage and they destroy their children through that because these demons then pass on to their children. These demons then pass on to their grandchildren because they did not walk in that blessing of purity that the Lord wants us. It's, God is not a killjoy God. He's not just wanting to stay, steal away all your joy and all your peace and all your you know, satisfaction. God created sex and it's beautiful within the context of marriage. Sex is like it's like fire in the fireplace, you know, it's beautiful, it, it keeps the room warm. But the moment you take that fire out of the fireplace and you put it into the living room, it will destroy the room. You know, sex in marriage, it, it's, like a, it's like soil in the plant pot. It causes the plant to be nourished. You know, but if you take that soil out of the pot and you put it on your plate during dinner, that soil no longer brings nourishment. That soil becomes dirt. It stains your plate. So when you take sex out of a bed, out of a bed and you begin to, you know, kind of watch it and you begin to watch other people act that, they're doing it for money and you begin to fill your mind with that. Guess what happens? You're staining your mind. You're, you're staining your relationships. You're staining your consciousness. And I just want to encourage somebody who's watching or maybe you stumbled up on this video to let you know, listen, there is hope for you. There's so many people that God has delivered from this, from this affliction, from this demon and from this addiction. And there's freedom for you. And we have other videos in the description below concerning prayer and concerning how to be free and what some practical things you can do to beat this thing. I just want to encourage you, there is a way out for you through Jesus Christ. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If you're a part of my community, thank you for being a part of the community. If you're not part of the community, hit subscribe, click on the bell so you can be notified every time we go live. We stream every Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific time. Appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time.